Okay, so today we're going to talk about transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body. So, um, basically, the gas exchange is a continuous process in the body. So, there are two gas involved, which are the oxygen and carbon dioxide. And these two gas are transported by different mechanisms. So, oxygen, they will enter the body through bloodstream and transport to tissue, while the carbon dioxide will be fused out of the body. Okay, so for ex oxygen transport, there are two ways. First, um, the oxygen will be transported through dissolving in the bloodstream, but this is, this is only 1.5% of the oxygen. The other 98.5% will be bonded to a protein, which is the hemoglobin. So a hemoglobin. A hemoglobin contains iron molecules, and these iron molecules is found in the middle of the porphyrin ring. Okay, so um, this iron will bind with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin in the human body. Okay, so there are a few types of proteins, the hemoglobin. The first one is the hemoglobin, which is most common and the most evolved, which can be found in most organisms like mammals. And then there's the hemocyanin, which are mostly found in mollusks, for example. And then the most relatively rare one is the hemerythine, which can be, which is difficult to find and are only found in some analytes. Okay, so the next transport is the carbon dioxide, which is transported out of the body. So how does it transport? Well, first, it will dissolve directly into the blood. Now, why does this occur? Because um, the carbon dioxide is soluble in blood. This can dissolve in plasma. Another way is by binding with hemoglobin. When, it, when carbon dioxide binds with hemoglobin, it forms carbaminohemoglobin. And the next one is the carbon dioxide will be carried as bicarbonate ion. So more bicarbonate, oh, sorry, uh, the carbon dioxide will bind with oxygen, uh, sorry, with water, which is H2O. So once it binds with water, it will form carbonic acid. So the carbonic acid will dissociate into bicarbonate, um, bicarbonate and hydrogen, and then will be transported to the lungs. So more bicarbonate will cause a movement to the plasma in exchange for chloride. All right, that is all. First question is, what are the factors affecting the pH level in blood? So one of the factors is acidosis, which is the blood has too much acid and resulting the decrease in blood pH level. The pH level under acidosis is below 7.35 7 pH. Acidosis is caused by an overabundance of acid in the blood or build up of carbon dioxide in the blood that results from poor lung function or slow breathing. The second uh, factor is alkalosis, which uh, where the blood has too much gas and resulting the increase in blood pH level. The pH level under alkalosis is above 7.45 pH. And alkalosis is caused by loss of acid from the blood or low level of carbon dioxide in the blood that results from rapid or deep breathing. What are the differences between land animals' respiratory pigments with aquatic marine animals? So there are few respiratory pigments. What is a respiratory pigment? It is any molecule that increases the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Respiratory pigments bind to oxygen and carries it around the body, keeping organs and tissues oxygenated. The four most common respiratory pigments are hemoglobin, hemocyanin, hemorrhine, and the chlorocrolin. So, the differences of these four respiratory pigments are hemoglobin is found in humans and vertebrates. They are bright red when oxygenated dark red or purplish when deoxygenated, and they contain iron. Hemocyanin is found in invertebrates, which are the epiclops and mollusks. They are blue when oxygenated and colorless when deoxygenated. The oxygen binding site contains two copper ions. Hemorrhine are found in marine invertebrates. 
They are violet to pink and colorless when they oxygen. They have no heme group and the oxygen binding site consists of two ion ions. So for chlorofluorine, their analytes are the moly at the marine polysite. They turn from green to red when oxygenated and the effectivity for oxygen is weaker compared to the hemoglobins and they also con contain iron. Okay, we move to the next question. The third question is, does high fever affect the blood pressures? Okay, there are a few symptoms where the blood pressure can be increased either by physical stresses, which is seasonal cold or flu, or by emotional stresses, which is work or social stress. The third question is, during fever, the body immune response and the amount of intruder in the body is increasing. This causes the increase in blood pressure, which then will back to normal once the intruder has been removed. The normal range of blood pressure is between 90 over 60 to 140 over 90. Okay, the table below shows the hypertension and hypertension blood pressures, which the blood pressures can be ridden by the systolic blood pressures and the systolic blood pressures. The low blood pressures is less than 80 and for the systolic less than 60. The normal range for systolic is between 80 to 120 and the systolic is between 60 to 80. Followed by the pre hypertension and high blood pressure, stage 1 is between 140 to 159 for systolic and the systolic is between 90 to 99. Followed by the high blood pressure stage 2 and the last one is high blood pressure crisis which is higher than 180 or for the stolic is higher than 110. Why our blood is red? Our hemoglobin protein is made out of a subunit of hemes. When we have the disease that name methemoglobinemia, which is an which is a which is a disorder in which too much methemoglobin is made. Methemoglobin has a chocolate brown color. It's present, it's present in everyone's blood, but it's normally at a very low level. In a methemoglobin molecule, the ion has been changed from a form that has a plus 2 charge to a form of that has a plus 3 charge. When the ion is in this form, hemoglobin can't transport oxygen and the cells can't make enough energy. Therefore, the high concentration of methemoglobin causes the blood to appear brown, red, or even chocolate brown in color. Another situation which causes um, human blood to appear as green color is the situation no, 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 is the disease that is called sulfimoglobinemia. Sulfimoglobinemia is caused by the sulfur joining the hemoglobin molecules, which alter the molecule cannot transport oxygen. Selfimoglobinemia is usually caused by exposure to high doses of certain medications and chemicals. For example, a long-term overdose of sumatriptan and a migraine medication reportedly caused one case of green blood discovered by doctors. Sumatriptan is sometimes sumatriptan is sometimes known as imitrex. It belongs to a group of chemicals known as sulfonamides. And the symptoms of the sulfimoglobinemia is cyanosis and constipation. In animals, um, there, are, there are several several types of the color of blood. Um, the first one is green color blood. blood. Example for the animals that has the blood is the gist of skin, Um, Skin, the green blooded skins do have hemoglobin in their blood, but the blood also contains a very high concentration of biliverdine. Biliverdine is a green pigment produced from the breakdown of hemoglobin. Its main location in most is involved a secretion produ produced by the liver 
bowel emulsifies fats in the small intestine and makes them easier to digest. Some members of the phylum Annelida, for example, segmented worms and leeches, also contain, contain the green colored blood. Um, this is because uh, their blood contains a green respiratory pigment that called chlorocorine. Blood containing chlorocorine may be green but isn't necessarily so. Is the blue colored blood. The blood hemolin of some invertebrates contains hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin. Hemocyanin is the respiratory pigment in mollusks such as snails, slugs, clams, octopuses, and squids. And in some arthropods, such as crabs, lobster, and spiders, this pigment is found in the liquid hemolin instead of being trapped in cells. As oxygen is transported around an insect's body in a network of tubes known as the tracheal system, the hemolin doesn't transport oxygen and therefore doesn't need Respiratory pigments, the pale colors which are sometimes seen in the liquid are thought to be due to the presence of pigmented food molecules that have entered the hemolin. Sea cucumbers extract vanadium from sea water and concentrate it in their bodies. The vanadium is used to make proteins called vanamines, which become yellow, then they are oxygenated. When, like other insects, Cockroaches have trachea that transport oxygen and have no respiratory pigments in their hemolin. Um, their, the liquid is usually colorless and the females that are producing eggs may have pale orange hemolin. In this organ called the fat body makes an orange protein called vitellogenin. Vitellogenin gives rise to a major egg yolk protein called vitellin. Vitellogenin is secreted into the hemolin, giving it a slight color. Some marine invertebrates have hemorrhytrin as a respiratory pigment. This pigment is colorless when deoxygenated and pink-violet in color when oxygenated. Done. That's all from us today. Thank you. Thank you.